My first interest in psychology when I was still at high school was, I think like most people, more on the medical side uh, and I got very interested in psychosomatic medicine, the, the power of the mind to cure diseases or think that you have a disease. And then when I studied psychology at the university, first was interested in perception and then gradually got interested in attention and then memory. There's a variety of points of view on how memory can be carved up. But one way which is generally quite accepted is the distinction between procedural memory and declarative memory. Procedural memory is learning to do some skill, it could be driving a car or playing a musical instrument. In that kind of memory we're learning to do something, as opposed to declarative memory, which is more the way we usually think about memory, taking some information and being able to express it to another person. In declarative memory we have various branches like episodic memory would be just memory for something which has happened to us personally and we relate uh, you know what we had for breakfast today or the last movie we've seen. There's also semantic memory which is really just memory for general knowledge uh, which is less personal but just uh, our experience of the world. And then finally, uh, people talk about working memory, which is a question of holding some information in mind. We're consciously aware of this information. So a simple example would be looking up a telephone number and then dialing it or telling it to someone else. Or any small amount of information we can hold consciously and then again express it back to the person who's asked us about it. My job really is as a, as a basic scientist trying to understand memory. Uh, we have to you know, go right down from behavior through brain imaging right down to the cell level to get a full understanding of what's going on. So I play a little part in this uh, overall jigsaw puzzle and uh, on, again on the basis of what we found experimentally in, in the lab we've been able to design for example rehab procedures which uh, we hope will at least slow the decline of memory and perhaps even reinstate memory performance in older people. There's a variety of different ways of studying memory from observing people's behavior to giving them questionnaires uh, to do actual brain uh, imaging studies. What I focused on mainly are behavioral studies so that what I do would be to ask people to learn various kinds of information, it could be word lists or sentences or pictures or something of that kind. And then we have a retrieval test where people are perhaps trying to recall the words they've seen or recognize them or recognize the pictures that they've seen. And of course, uh, the particular experiments are all related to the particular theory that we're, we're focused on. So it's not just kind of randomly asking them to do stuff, but in every experiment, something slightly different to illustrate the various kinds of memory that uh, we're, we're interested in. The Rotman Research Institute has been a terrific place for me to work, largely because of the wonderful colleagues that, that I have there. It's uh, one of the best uh, groups in the world. We have excellent facilities to do neuroimaging. Research is very much encouraged within the Baycrest context. And the fact of being in a hospital setting, we can do collaborative work with clinicians who are dealing with patients with memory disorders and uh, I've increasingly done more uh, such uh, work uh, along with some of the uh, excellent physicians at, at Baycrest. So a bunch of things like that uh, means it's just uh, one of the best places in the world objectively to study memory and aging, both healthy aging and when memory goes wrong in things like uh, Alzheimer's disease.